Hi there, welcome to Sunday's IndyCar on 22nd of September 2019. My name's Gordon Ross. In today's show, we're going to be looking at the marching season, or how the marching season has now become an entire year for the Orange Order anyway. It seems that just about everybody is taking to the streets at the moment to protest, or to demonstrate, or, or simply just to, um, to try and show support for a particular point of view. We've had the Orange Order with five different marches almost in a single day. We've had uh, Republican marches as well recently. Uh, there was the, the risk of banning marches because of sectarian violence. We've had hope over fear yesterday as well as um, some, um, some more sectarian marching, so we say as well. Luckily, everything went off without any problems. We've also had a march through Edinburgh uh, to stay in the European Union, a cross-party march led by Joanna Cherry and um, and also Labour uh, MPs and MSPs. So there's been marches going on virtually in every corner of Scotland for one reason or another, including, incidentally, uh, the Children's Climate Strike march and rally as well. So we've got so many people taking to the streets, so many issues that people feel strongly about. It's very difficult to see through the cloud and confusion of all of these different issues to find one sort of clear, critical path through it. So to try and condense this down a little bit today and to try and find some clarity, some light at the other end of all the smoke and the mirrors and this tunnel of European Union Brexit or independence or the climate catastrophe, all of these things weighing on everybody's minds at the same time. But which do we prioritise? Which comes first? That's the, the main thing. In my trade, we're taught to teach people to recognise hazards. And we also teach them to prioritise hazards, the closest hazard first. So in the case of Brexit and in the case of independence, we have to look at things from the point of view of which one uh, is closest to us and which one we need to deal with first. But there's a problem. If we deal with... Um, excuse me just for a moment. Yeah, sorry, just clearing my screen for a moment there. If we deal with Brexit first, then we've got a problem, because if we deal with Brexit first, then it's a massive distraction from the growing momentum which the independence movement has gained, partly through Brexit, but not entirely. Remember that um, support for independence has stayed steady ever since 2015, and it has continued to gradually increase well before Brexit even happened. When Brexit started, that pushed the, um, the numbers up even further. But why are they stuck at 49%? Why are they stuck at 52%? Why are they not higher than that? Alex Salmond himself asked the same question recently um, in, a, in a debate. Why is it that there aren't more people coming out for independence? It should be well over 60% by now. So why isn't that happening? Now, many of us would just say, well, it's because the polls are biased. And that's true, the polls are biased and they will always be rigged to try and show as little support for independence as possible. But having said that, uh, the online polling that's being done, and I've counted now nearly 10 online polls from various newspapers, uh, as well as newspaper polls as well, traditional ones, all putting independence support somewhere between 60 and 86%. And yet it's not appearing in the mainstream media poll, uh, polls conducted by the so-called well-known pollsters, like panel base, like, um, like ICM or whoever else you know, is, is doing polling. So why is it that the mainstream polls are so low and why is it that newspaper polls and online polls are so high support for independence? Well, some people say it's because um, people who read newspapers instead of going online for the news, the kind of people who read newspapers tend to be older, they tend to be more stuck in their ways, they tend to be more right-wing, they tend to have more fixed views and be much more anti-independent. So the people who are polled for these uh, polls are often signed up uh, to these uh, public these uh, public survey companies and they do regular surveys. They'll be asked weekly how do you feel about certain things but remember the polling companies always ask the same people over and over again so they're not very likely to get any different answers from this particular demographic of people 
that's one reason why the the standard normal type of poll is always so low for independence. On the other hand, once you go onto the internet, um, there are millions of people on the internet and the polls are wide open. And so instead of getting a thousand people sampled and hand picked to represent the different uh, demographic strata of society, you're getting everybody and it's completely unfiltered. It's whoever happens to um, read the post um, or, or read the uh, electronic version of that newspaper. And they will do that poll and we'll get a completely wildly different result because it's unfiltered and maybe 10,000 people might vote in it. And you'll get something like 80% for independence, you know, and 20% for staying in the UK. And that's okay, that, that's actually still a valid measure of public opinion. It's just not a scientific measure of it. It's a snapshot of a particular day uh, with a particular readership online that day. It's random. If you take enough of those polls, and I've been looking at the last 10 of them, and the last 10 of them have all had independent support over 60%. In fact, the average, uh, when I took them all, was around about 72% for independence, if you measure it purely from the accumulation of different online and newspaper online polls. So there's a difference between uh, the printed press and their polls and the electronic media and their polling. And the electronic media has a far, far larger audience and a much bigger readership. Remember, newspapers have a tiny circulation, just a few hundred thousand people at most, some only tens of thousands. So they don't have the same kind of muscle, if you like, and the readership want to see a certain result. They want to see that independence is not very popular. That's that's what their news. That's why they read those newspapers, to reinforce the ideas that they have. But on the other hand, we can't really trust the polls. But we can tell from the amount of people marching and turning out that there has been a big sea change in public opinion. There is definitely a lot more people wanting to vote for independence. But one of the reasons posited for why there might not be more than, say, 60%, if we were taking a slightly lower average, is partly because of Brexit. It's a massive distraction. It splits every single party in the country, except apparently the Lib Democrats, who seem to have suddenly found their voice and become terribly decisive. But anyway, the issue here is that roughly 30%, allegedly 30% of SNP members voted Leave. So, you know, you've got 62% of Scots voted to remain and 28% who voted to leave. And that must be represented in other places like the SNP, right? So for every uh, new convert, for every no voter who converts to yes because of Brexit, you might lose uh, maybe one uh, yes voter who was for Brexit, who voted for Brexit and doesn't really want to vote for independence if it means staying in the European Union. Now, there are people like that. They're not many, admittedly. But let's say they were outnumbered two to one by joiners, people who are moving from no to yes. We're still losing one for every two that we get. And, and because of this, the growth has been slowed down. If you take Brexit away and campaign solely for independence, uh, and if they say, well, what about Brexit? We'll say, well, we'll decide that after after we've got our independence, we'll decide whether we like Brexit or not. Because people like to focus on w one thing at a time, and it's very confusing to have too many targets at once. There is a great deal of um, strife in the world at the moment caused by the collapsing global economy, the collapsing biosphere, the fact that we're polluting too much, the end of the oil era, the beginning of the electric era. All of these things are going to cause major headaches. But at the moment, we need to focus on what's in front of us. And what's in front of us at the moment is England wants to Brexit. Boris Johnson is going to take the UK out of Europe one way or another, with or without a deal. My guess is he'll get a deal. It'll be a stripped out deal. It will be like Theresa May's, but he will have taken out one or two red lines because it's the only way he can get any kind of deal out of the, the Europeans. It's either that or we crash out. But we won't know for another eight days because Boris has to come up with the solution that the European Union can get behind within the next week. Because after that, there is no time left for the European Union to discuss it at their summit on, the, I think it's the 16th of, uh, of October. And then, of course, there's the, the last two weeks before the Brexit cut-off date. So there's an awful lot at stake. 
but as far as we're concerned, if we're campaigning for independence, let's not be distracted by Brexit. Um, Joanna Cherry's efforts to frustrate Brexit are heroic, and she obviously feels passionately that we should stay in the European Union. I must admit, I would prefer to stay in the European Union, but I would not prefer to stay in the European Union if it cost us our independence. I think that independence in Scotland is more important at the moment than Brexit is. We can sort out our relationship with Europe after we're independent. There's no problem with that. Whether we're out of Europe or not, we can always decide to come back in afterwards. Or we could decide to stay out and have a trade agreement, you know, from like like Norway, like the, the European Free Trade uh, Association, which is a group of small countries that trade in and out of Europe but without being members. We might want to do that. Let's not put all our eggs in the one basket. Nicola Sturgeon has tied independence to Brexit, and I still believe that this is the biggest mistake that she could make. We have to tie independence to nothing at all. It must purely be about Scotland leaving the UK. Then we can have the debate about whether Scotland wants to be in or out of Europe, or how far into Europe it wants to be. And also, and this is the other interesting point that people have been arguing about today, the Queen. Now, I had sort of um, earwigged on a conversation between Scotty McClough and an independence campaigner, and they were exchanging polite um, banter, shall we say. Scotty McClough is one, is one who is a royalist. He, he likes the royal family, he wants the Queen to stay as head of state, but he says he wouldn't vote for independence if the Queen wasn't there. So there you go. There's another one of these people who puts preconditions on independence. He wants to be able to bow to the Queen and to, you know, to have the Queen as head of state, which is his right. If he wants that, that's fine. But the point is that this is another distraction. You know, having the Queen as head of state is irrelevant to independence at the moment. The first thing to do is get the independence, then decide who you want to have as your head of state and have that debate afterwards and then vote on it as a free vote for everybody, just a big referendum. Do we want the Queen to remain as head of state? And if so, under what circumstances? You know, does she just get her head on the stamps and the money and is that it? You know, does she come and um, oversee the Braemar Highland Games once a year? We don't know, but it doesn't really matter. What matters at the moment is that we focus on getting out of this one-sided so-called union which none of us ever wanted to be in in the first place and nobody asked us and nobody voted to go into union with England and it's a bit like saying you know to Germans do you know you must remain in the Third Reich you know because somebody decided that back in 1939 no we don't have to stay in the union with the UK there's no reason for us uh, to take that backward step and remain in the union when Plainly, the Tories are doing a fantastic job of completely trashing every single country um, around them at the moment in this effort to become free of the European Union and get so <laughs> get control back. They say, look at the amount of control they've got. None. Boris Johnson is a minority government, a minority party. Uh, he's leading a party which has a negative 45 uh, minority at the moment. And he shut the parliament down so none of his, uh, none of the opposition can stop him doing what he wants to do. I mean, he's, he's basically stolen Brexit and run away with it. Anyway, in eight days' time, we'll find out. But for my money, it's time to stop saying, you know, a vote for independence means a vote to stay in the EU. Let's stop saying that. Let's just say a vote for independence gives us the choice about how we relate to the European Union. And leave it at that. And let people who voted for Brexit have their opinion and be able to express it after we leave the UK. I'm not leaving, I don't want to leave the UK because of Brexit. I want to leave the UK because the UK is unfair, because Scotland is being robbed blind. We're having our oil revenues torn away from us and we're letting it happen. We're having our resources plundered and we're letting it happen. We're having our taxes halved half of their money taken from us by another country for nothing that we get. You know, we don't get any benefit from the sewerage system in London. We don't get any benefit from Crossrail. We get no benefit from a third runway. Heathrow, in fact, quite the reverse. 
we get no benefit from HS2. Even more, the reverse. We get zero benefit from being a target for a nuclear strike because we've got 400 or no, sorry, 200 atomic warheads stored not 25 miles from where I'm standing at, at the moment. All of these things, these are the reasons for wanting to leave the UK. They have nothing to do with Brexit. Brexit is an entirely different matter. Let's let the UK get on with crashing out of the EU in whatever fashion it wants. But let's make sure that we have our exit from the UK for our own reasons, not because of what uh, Boris Johnson is doing at the moment, but because of what everything that the UK has done to Scotland in 300 years. We have a very long history of being abused, of our men being uh, taken off to war, a disproportionate number of our young people killed in action to any other part of the UK. We are the cannon fodder, we are the guinea pigs for social experimentation, we are the guinea pigs for um, for anything, in fact, and we are the dumping ground for ammunition and poison gas and toxic chemicals. We are the dumping ground for anthrax, of all things. Scotland is the UK's dustbin and the UK's gold mine at the same time. That's why we're aiming for independence. It's nothing to do with Brexit. Brexit, the European Union, we will figure that out for ourselves afterwards. But let's stay focused. Let's get the independence first, then we'll have the arguments about the Queen and the European Union afterwards and we'll sort them out ourselves and we'll, we'll agree among ourselves democratically this time what we want with the European Union and what we want with regards to the royal family as well. Um, one thing I would say is that if England does Brexit, and I, I'm pretty certain that they're going to now, but if they do, uh, and we end up independent, then we still have to be able to trade with England. And we need to think about how we would do that if we become or stay a part of the European Union. There's going to be a border across Scotland. There's going to be border checkpoints. Now, I hear you say, well, better that in Scotland than in Ireland. But there's still going to be a problem in Ireland if Northern Ireland is still part of the UK. You see where this is a mess? The, the Welsh people are now saying that they are thinking about independence as well. The whole of the UK is coming apart gradually and slowly. It's just drifting apart. England is doing its own thing, which nobody else wants to do. Let's let them get on with it. We'll concentrate on our independence. I'll see you later. Have a good Sunday. Bye-bye.